Hello, my name is Stephan Holmes, Fairfax Renaissance Development Corporation's, or FRDC's, board chair. I want to welcome you to our 2019 annual meeting. Historically, FRDC says goodbye to outgoing board members and welcomes new board members to your organization at the annual meeting. However, this year, because of COVID-19, we decided not to make any changes on our board uh, during this pandemic. We chose instead to focus on moving initiatives forward and keeping the organization healthy. We are coming to you today from our FRDC offices. And as you can see, our backdrop is art done by and with our neighborhood youth. This exemplifies our commitment to work with all stakeholders in the community. We would have also begun master planning for the next five years in 2019. But because of the COVID pandemic, we were not able to do so. We look forward to resuming master planning activities in 2021. So on behalf of all of our board members, we want to thank you for joining us today. And please know that we appreciate your continued support. It's with great pleasure that I now get to introduce our executive director, Denise Van Leer. Denise? Thank you, Stefan, and good day. I'm happy to share with you FRDC and the Fairfax Communities 2019 Annual Report. As we look back, I want to thank the following partners, friends, and supporters who continue to assist and encourage us. Now to recognize our partners and supporters in alphabetical order. Antioch Baptist Church. Bruning Foundation, Case Western Reserve University, CHN Housing Partners, Chemical Bank, City of Cleveland, Cleveland Clinic, Cleveland Clinic Foundation, Cleveland Development Advisors, Cleveland Foundation, Cleveland Museum of Art, Cleveland Neighborhood Progress, Cuyahoga County, Cuyahoga County Land Bank, EF Boyd and Sons, Ebony's Angels, The Finance Fund, First Energy Corporation, First Federal of Lakewood. First National Bank. Greater Cleveland Partnership. Huntington Bank. J.P. Morgan. John Carroll University. Judson at University Circle. McGregor Foundation. Neighbor Green. PNC Bank, Tanner Construction, Vinaya Jones, The Rose of Sharon Barber Salon, University Hospitals, Westfield Insurance Foundation, Westfield Insurance Employees, Western Reserve Revitalization and Management, I would like to recognize all board and staff at this time and say thank you for your commitment in 2019. 2019 was a pivotal year for the Fairfax neighborhood and for FRDC. Though challenging, FRDC continued to build on initiatives identified in its five-year strategic plan. And 2019 was, without a doubt, a year for building the community, all made possible with a little help from our partners and friends. Can you feel that? Something's changing. 
a shift from a focus on me to something bigger. Because while it's perfectly fair to ask, what's in it for me? Finding the answer comes from asking what's in it for we. At TCF Bank, our purpose lies in answering that question in giving every me the financial strength to make us all a stronger we. PNC Bank is proud to be a longtime partner of the Fairfax Renaissance Development Corporation, and we strive to create a better future for all of our neighbors, whether that's supporting intergenerational housing, funding programs to spur community and economic development, creating opportunities for small business owners, or by providing free career services at the PNC Fairfax Connection. We help dreams become reality. We must build strong communities, not only providing financial support, but by uplifting all residents. That's why PNC has committed $1 billion to help end systemic racism and to economically empower African Americans in low and moderate income communities. With our community partners, we can make a difference, just like Henry Louis Gates have done. Mr. Gates, congratulations on receiving the Lewis Stokes Visionary Award. And thank you to the Fairfax Renaissance Development Corporation for being a champion of Cleveland. May we all further inspire to create a strong and healthy Northeast Ohio. Thank you. Our partner support is invaluable. In 2019, the Fairfax neighborhood was chosen by Freshwater Cleveland as one of two neighborhoods to be featured in its On the Ground series. The magazine staff set up space in our offices for six weeks to capture events, plans, programs, and people in the neighborhood, and concluded with a Ride and Learn event at PNC Fairfax Connections, courtesy of the Cleveland City Club. The Cleveland Foundation provided funding to create the Community Ambassador Program which selects and trains residents to develop stories about their neighborhood, providing unique insight. Four residents received training, reporting stories that captured the pulse of the neighborhood. Thank you for the Cleveland Foundation. Across the ocean, FRDC's executive director, me, <laughs> was part of the 2019 Jewish Federation of Cleveland's Thomas and Joanne Adler Civic Leaders Mission to Israel. Traveling with other nonprofit and civic leaders, the group explored issues facing Israeli society and learned about the complexities of the region. The group met with our Israeli counterparts to assist with relationship building and to enhance the work we do in Cleveland. It was truly an unforgettable experience and thank you to Tom and Joni Adler. In our neighborhood, FRDC staff worked to acquire 32 properties for the Innovation Square project, FRDC's mixed income, mixed use neighborhood plan, including property needed for two new street extensions. Work continued with our partner, McCormick Baron Salazar, to fund and design the first multifamily building in the project, which is scheduled to break ground in 2021. FRDC, the Cleveland Clinic, and the City of Cleveland worked to attract a national grocery store to locate in the Fairfax neighborhood. Kinez Homes continued with the construction of single-family homes in the project's footprint, and Playwright Park, the Innovation Square centerpiece, was complete with the installation of public art. Neighborhood residents, medical students, and elementary and high school youth all worked together with the artists to develop the themes for the artwork, then came together to paint parachute cloth, which was attached to shipping containers, creating vibrant pops of color, community history, and aspirations. Protecting the heritage of Fairfax is a critical factor in how the redevelopment of the Innovation Square footprint must be aligned with and respectful of the neighborhood's rich history. FRDC would like to recognize and thank its partners, PNC Bank, 
the Cleveland Clinic, Councilman Blaine Griffin for believing in and investing in the Innovation Square project from its inception. FRDC continued work in the New Economy neighborhood, the area along Opportunity Corridor or East 105th between Cedar and Quincy Avenues, East 105 to Stokes Boulevard. FRDC worked with the City of Cleveland and other stakeholders to acquire land to attract EDS, MEDS, and technology companies to the area. In addition to acquire, acquiring 32 parcels, FRDC demolished eight structures in 2019 to make way for new housing, roads, and businesses. Furthering the vision in FRDC's five-year strategic investment plan, the Fairfax neighborhood welcomed two new businesses in 2019. The Cleveland Veterinary Clinic, owned by Dr. Vinaya Jones, an African-American entrepreneur, opened in September at Church Square. Fairfax, as well as surrounding neighborhoods, were very excited to see the doctor invest in the area. Dunkin' Donuts also opened on Carnegie Avenue after several years of working with various franchise owners to attract the Dunkins to the area. Fairfax worked with several other businesses interested in locating in the East 79th and Carnegie area as well. Determined to assist individuals and families with finding employment and establishing careers, FRDC's Workforce Development Program engaged over 300 individuals in 2019, offering a variety of soft skill development services. Staff established new partnerships with MGM Casinos, Konania Homes, the Census Bureau, and Wheels to host monthly hiring events. FRDC continued its partnerships with Cleveland Clinic, RTA, Dominion, and others. 61 individuals gained employment in 2019 through the program. Operating in tandem with FRDC's workforce program, the Fairfax Neighborhood Technology Center continued its work to bridge the digital divide. The Technology Center offers City of Cleveland residents free computer training classes, free internet access, and workforce development training from a qualified technical instructor. In 2019, 2,168 people participated in the center's services and FRDC continued its work with partners to bring affordable, reliable internet services to the area. Now in its 11th year, the Greater Circle Living Program, or GCL, developed and administered by FRDC, provides housing incentives to qualified employees of anchor institutions and nonprofit employees in 10 neighborhoods surrounding University Circle. The program helps to support the ongoing recovery in these neighborhoods, assist in increasing the tax base, provides an expanding customer base for local businesses, and encourages community involvement by new residents. In 2019, GCL processed and approved 125 applications from qualified employees for home purchase, rental assistance, and exterior repair. FRDC continued its longstanding partnership with CHN Housing Partners to provide the Home Energy Assistance Program, or HEAP. Providing services since 2000, HEAP staff assisted nearly 2,700 people with financial payments to restore utilities, prevent disconnection, determine eligibility for the percentage of income program, and process applications for the Cuyahoga County Prevention, Retention, and Contingency Program. Created in 1996, FRDC continued its Model Blocks program. Through the program, FRDC provides exterior home repairs to low-income, primarily senior homeowners. Typical projects include new porches, replacing stairs,
painting, gutter repair or replacement, power washing, windows, doors, and minor carpentry repairs. In 2019, FRDC assisted eight homeowners with exterior home repairs in spite of COVID. Committed to providing opportunities for learning, FRDC continued with the following programs and initiatives. Homework Help is an after-school program designed specifically for the students at Griot Village, our intergenerational affordable housing development. Volunteers from Antioch Baptist Church, undergraduate students from John Carroll University, and graduate students from Case Western Reserve University's Mandel School tutor and mentor Griot youth Monday through Thursday during the school year. In 2019, the program identified homework help officers to act as role models and incentivize leadership. Two young women from Griot Village also participated in the Cleveland Cavaliers all Girls Clinic on International Women's Day. FRDC also continued its partnership with Bolton Elementary School, coordinating the Lunch Buddies program and advocating with Fairfax residents for Bolton Elementary to remain open as Cleveland Public Schools shuttered some K-8 schools in the city. FRDC, Fairfax residents, Cleveland Clinic and Cleveland Clinic Learner College of Medicine Case Western and Case Western Reserve University collaborated to create the Interprofessional Development Community Collaboration Initiative. That's a mouthful. <laughs> the program allows health profession students to collaborate with Fairfax residents to address community health needs by working together to design and implement projects. The goals are to increase health profession students' cultural competencies, to empower residents to maximize resources for accessing health care, and to address one or more aspects of social determinants of health. A nutrition project will be a, the first initiative for the group. On August 20th, 2019, FRDC, Fairfax residents, Mayor Jackson, Councilman Blaine Griffin joined Bishop Nelson Perez and Principal Jim Smith to cut the ribbon at the Cletus Jeckering Learning Center on the campus of St. Adelbert Church and School. As the first African American Catholic Church in Cleveland, the institution holds history and hope. The 13,000 square foot learning center holds nine classrooms, a cafeteria, and a playground. The school raised nearly $5 million through a fundraising campaign and a generous donation from the Jeckering family. The school plans to continue to expand its campus and is definitely a jewel in the Fairfax neighborhood. During 2019, Fairfax residents, Cleveland Clinic volunteers, Cleveland Clinic Lewis Stokes scholars, and FRDC staff volunteered to clean up multiple locations around the neighborhood. Vacant lots along Quincy Avenue and East 79th Street and Serenity Park were some of the areas that received beautification efforts. During the summer, FRDC continued its tradition of hosting movie nights in Quincy Park. In July, FRDC showed the Emoji Movie, and in August, Smallfoot. Local restaurants and small businesses sponsored the two events. Liberty Hill Baptist Church, Westfield Insurance, and Westfield Insurance employees, Antioch Baptist Church, the Cleveland Clinic Respiratory Nursing Unit, the Cleveland Cavaliers Youth Sports League, and FRDC sponsored nine families for 2019's Adopt-A-Family program. The families identified by FRDC and community partners 
were active community members in the Fairfax neighborhood who were in need of financial support over the Christmas holidays. In partnership with Councilman Blaine Griffin, FRDC again distributed 1,000 gift cards toward six residents during the Thanksgiving Christmas holidays. Now we have the pleasure of recognizing our 2019 partners. To recognize our partner of the year, Stephen Holmes, FRDC board chair. Thank you, Denise. It's with great pleasure that I get to present the partner of the year, Cleveland Clinic Innovations. I want to present the partner of the year award to Dr. William Morris, who's the executive medical director. Cleveland Clinic Innovations is, is excited about being a part of the Fairfax community, and we're excited to have them. Many of the staff enjoy the neighborhood parks and appreciate being able to give back. In 2019, staff reached out to FRDC to identify opportunities to become more involved. They participated in the neighborhood cleanup, assisted with landscaping at residents' homes, and assisted with painting a senior's house. When the school year started, they reached out again and we directed them to Bolton Elementary School. Their staff purchased supplies for Bolton teachers and students. Their level of commitment to Fairfax is worth celebrating. So thank you to our fellow neighbor, Cleveland Clinic Innovations for your support. We look forward to continuing this great partnership. Thank you, Stefan, and to the Fairfax community for this tremendous award. Being part of the Fairfax community is so important for our culture of innovation. While we look for breakthroughs that achieve better care for all patients, we also look to providing a community and an ecosystem for growth for Northeast Ohio. A healthy innovation ecosystem relies on a thriving community. Cleveland Clinic Innovations brings new companies, startups, and new ideas to Northeast Ohio. Being physically located in the Fairfax community allows us to continue to thrive, grow, and partner. We are honored to receive this award, but we are more privileged to be part of the community. Thank you, Fairfax. I look forward to continuing this partnership and to helping make Fairfax a healthier neighborhood. And now, I'm happy to introduce our partner resident of the year, John Addison. John is an outstanding volunteer in the Fairfax community and a former Fairfax resident. The retired educator puts kids first and is kind and caring. He goes the extra mile for the community and is passionate about helping children. He always greets with a smile and a warm he hello. The Fairfax neighborhood is blessed to have him and FRDC is thankful and proud to recognize him as our 2019 Partner Resident of the Year. Thank you so much, John, for everything that you've done for the Fairfax neighborhood and more importantly for all the kids that love you. This is Van Leer. I thank you and the Fairfax Development Corporation family for this award. I view it as a recognition of my efforts to serve in Fairfax. I am honored and encouraged by this acknowledgement. I grew up in Fairfax and later lived in many areas of Cleveland. 20 years ago, I joined Antioch Baptist Church, which had and has many outreach ministries. Six years ago, I was recruited by one of the ministries to join Fairfax Development Corporation programs for Grid Village and Bolton School. Another ministry invited me to assist with a food distribution program managed by East Mount Zion Baptist Church. Today, I'm still involved. I'm encouraged to continue to serve as I observe members of Fairfax, Bolton, Cleveland Clinic, PNC staff, members of Antioch, East Mount Zion, Olivet Institutional Baptist Church, and members of other churches and residents going the extra mile to help a neighbor in Fairfax. I love and believe in what we do in Fairfax. I wish I had the ability to give more. I encourage anyone who is able 
but has not made a commitment to serve in any of Cleveland's underserved community to volunteer. Again, I love and I appreciate this award and what you do to serve our neighbors. Thank you very much. John, it was truly our pleasure. Lastly, FRDC was not able to hold its fundraiser, the Lewis Stokes Visionary Award in 2019 or 2020 due to COVID. Our last recipient, Congressman John Lewis, received the award in 2017 and passed away in July of 2020. We were honored to have Congressman Lewis accept the award and are strengthened by his courage, persistence, and commitment to getting into good trouble for our beloved community. Although we were not able to host an event in 2020, our recipient, Dr. Henry Lewis Gates, graciously accepted the award. Please watch his acceptance speech now. Members of the Fairfax Renaissance Development Corporation Board, distinguished guests and friends in Cleveland, especially the Fairfaxes, we may be physically separated on this special occasion, but the bonds between us have never been stronger or the work before us more critical. I thank you for welcoming me as we gather in ways that remind me of how previous generations huddled around the radio or television set to witness history unfolding. Being honored with the Lewis Stokes Community Visionary Award is profoundly meaningful to me. Lewis Stokes was a giant of our times, representing his hometown of Cleveland in the House of Representatives for 15 terms and becoming the first African American to win a seat on the all-important Appropriations Committee. I'm humbled to accept this award bearing his name and as the heir to a record of past honorees who are among my most cherished heroes, including Representative Stokes fellow congressman, indeed the conscience of the Congress, the late John Robert Lewis. The year 2020 has proven to be an agonizing inflection point in our country's history. African Americans especially have been devastated by a convergence of pandemics, COVID-19 and life and death crises in the policing of black bodies. The economic precariousness of so many black lives and impossible to look away from racial disparities in health and education. The protests that have exploded across the country and throughout the world in the wake of George Floyd's brutal murder by the Minneapolis police, and more recently, the shooting of Jacob Blake, seven times in the back, leaving him paralyzed and in agonizing pain in Kenosha, Wisconsin. These protests have occurred at a moment when all eyes are trained on American inequality, rooted in slavery and never dismantled even after emancipation or through the gains of the civil rights movement, and even after we had a black president for two terms. With the November election less than one month away, we must confront the diverging paths our country is taking, and we must work to move us all in the right and equitable direction. The question I keep coming back to is this, does inequality have to be part of our national legacy? We look to our national, state, and local leaders for solutions to our entrenched problems and remedies to the many diseases that afflict us. No corner of society has been left untouched. Indeed, in a few frantic months, we've absorbed a shocking level of loss and deprivation, violence and racial injustice. At this point, I would typically turn to history and to what our ancestors can teach us cite figures and names both known and unknown to honor their example and to learn from them about the stony road ahead. However, today, I choose to use the words of Doc Rivers, the coach of the LA Clippers. In late August, in the wake of Jacob Blake's shooting, Doc Rivers spoke forcefully and emotionally about the state of our union, and this is what he says. What stands out to me it's just watching the Republican convention viewing this fear. All you hear is Donald Trump and all of them talking about fear. We're the ones getting killed. We're the ones getting shot. We're the ones that are denied to live in certain communities. We've been hung, we've been shot. All you do is keep hearing about fear. 
it's amazing why we keep loving this country. And this country does not love us back. It's really so sad. It's just really sad. We've got to do better. We've got to demand better. Any serious understanding of American history must confront the central role that race has played in our national life from the rise of the transatlantic slave trade to the tragic murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, Rayshard Brooks, Tony McDade, and too many others to name. The African American story is, it has always been central to our very being as a country, and I don't think one should leave high school, college, or the university classroom without a critical engagement with its many dimensions. The cost of not knowing the history of our people is perilously high. Transforming education is at the root of the changes we need to make in this country. We need to bust the dollars from the rich school districts to the poor school districts so that the amount we spend in this country per child is exactly the same no matter where that child lives. We also need to provide hardship pay for talented, motivated teachers to work in the worst performing school districts. Education is both the first and the final frontier in dismantling racism, integrating the American mind, and fighting the rise of white supremacy. To borrow from Doc Rivers' heartfelt eloquence, what else can we do? And what else can we demand to make equality not just the goal, but an achievement in the United States of America? Well, here's my list. Every American should have access to affordable and available health care, as President Obama clearly understood, regardless of their income. Health care is a basic human right. It must be treated as such by our government. We need reasonable and effective gun control to fight violent criminality wherever it's happening. There's absolutely no excuse for our Congress not to pass reasonable limits on the numbers and types of guns a person can own. We need only look at the example of 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse, who crossed state lines, illegally armed, and killed two peaceful protesters in Kenosha. This is a national shame, and it can be stopped. Retraining our police forces is critical. I cannot stress enough the necessity of intense anti-racist training for the police, the development of healthy relations between the police and communities, and prosecution to the fullest extent of the law when they shoot black suspects seven times in the back in front of their own children. We should hold the police accountable. Finally, voting, voting, voting. We as Americans have to fight any manifestation of voter suppression, any attempt to suppress our sacred right to vote, any attempt to keep any segment of our population from voting, from closing polling stations, to passing voter ID laws, to messing with the United States Postal Service. This is what President Obama reminded us of in his eulogy for Congressman Lewis. Voting is sacred and is the key and the catalyst for all of the other changes that we have to make in a society. Anyone who tampers with our right to vote is nothing else but un-American. This is no time for equivocation or false equivalences. This is a time for truth. We cannot allow the forces of reaction to turn back the clock on American racial relations obliterating the heroic efforts of legions of Americans, white and black, Asian and Latino, Jewish and Christian, Muslim and Hindu, gay, straight and trans, who risked and sometimes tragically and nobly gave their lives to make certain that the arc of the moral universe bent toward justice. Too many hands today are trying to bend that arc back in another direction. And those of us who love truth and justice and the principles of democracy upon which this great nation of ours was founded must stand up against those forces, just as our ancestors did, just as Congressman Lewis Stokes did, just as John Lewis did. Let me close then with a quote from one who, in his young life, knew struggle and pain, uncertainty and strife, but also hope and faith and redemption in the face of suffering. And I'm speaking, of course, of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who said, all life is interrelated. We are tied in a single garment of destiny, caught in an inescapable network of mutuality. And whatever affects one directly, affects all indirectly. As long as there's poverty in the world, no man can be totally rich, even if he has a billion dollars. As long as diseases are rampant and millions of people cannot expect to live more than 28 years, no man can be totally healthy, 
even if he just got a clean bill of health from the Mayo Clinic. I can never be what I ought to be, Dr. King said, until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. This is the way the world is made. I didn't make it that way. You didn't make it that way. Dr. King concluded, we all found it that way. Thank you once again for the honor you've bestowed upon me. I'll treasure it always. Take good care of my friends. Stay safe, stay strong, keep the faith, and know that together we will make our way, as our people long have done, out of no way. Thank you. Wow, what a fitting conclusion to our annual meeting. Thank you, Dr. Gates. So from the board and staff of FRDC and the Fairfax neighborhood, thank you for your support and cooperation in working with us to build the Fairfax community. We are all energized and look forward to continuing to, do, to build the dream. Again, thank you and be safe. Thank you.